Hey, Coach, I uh, wanted to ask about that uh, perfectly downed uh, punt uh, between Pilardi and Mac Collins in, the, in that fourth quarter. Just um, how a play like that is executed, what uh, Mac is looking for, and having to know where he is on the field as he's looking up uh, at the ball, and, uh, and just the execution from a technique standpoint. Yeah, uh, you know, something we work on, you know, quite a bit, especially later in the week in practice. Um, and the bigger thing is charting, having a good understanding of where we where we believe those balls are going to be to give the uh, to give the gunners a good landmark. And then obviously Mac doing a good job winning at the line of scrimmage, making sure he avoids the returner and and then obviously being able to finish the play. So, uh, yeah, very well executed, big play in that, that point of the game. Mary. Hi, Danny. I, I was hoping uh, you might be able to give me some insight on this beyond. I know obviously every decision is made that's in the best interest of the team, but specifically the decision to move away from Jalen since he's come off uh, the COVID list and use Tommy Lee on returns. Obviously, Tommy Lee got hurt. Can you share the insight into whether you all are trying to save Jalen's energy, whether Tommy Lee has such a good skill set returning, a combination of the two, what the reason has been? No, I won't share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, there's there's so many there's so many things that that are going into these things, and and, and as you guys are are very well aware, over the last couple of weeks, there's you know there's even more that goes into it in terms of you know who we're going to have on game day and how we're going to be able to use them, and I mean there's so many things going on right now. It it, it really makes it uh, uh, interesting during the week. And with regard to long term, both Jalen and Javon Holland as returners. Has their work in those roles this year left you encouraged that they will be good NFL returners as we saw in college with them? I, I believe so. I think that both those kids are, are, are really good. I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's been a little bit of a, a blessing uh, that they are, they've both evolved um, as quickly as they have offensively and defensively and their roles have really, really expanded uh, on those two sides of the ball. So, uh, both of them really good players. Thank you. Travis. Hey, coach, I had a couple of questions for you. First one was about Jason Sanders and kind of, I think we all would agree that the, the mental side of kicking is a big part of it. What's his process or I guess your message to him when the opposing team tries to ice your kicker uh, before the half or before the end of the game? Yeah. You know, that's, that, that, that's for us, it's a practice kick. Uh, you know, anytime we snap the football, we're going to kick it and, uh, you know, I thought both balls were, were were well struck. I think you know the first one he hit uh, hit very well down the middle, and you know maybe the second one, maybe after just hitting from 59, you know maybe uh, you know tried to give it a little extra oomph after just going from that distance and pushed it a little bit. But you know to me when we miss, as long as we're hitting good hits, and I thought that was a good hit on the ball. But you know in terms of icy, you don't you just play the play. You can't control what they're going to do. You know the percentages and the numbers are. Are, are interesting when you look at them and you, know, you really got to get into certain individual players, but, uh, and then, you know, then it's what the head coach wants to do. So uh, they had the timeout. They didn't feel like taking it at half and uh, worked out. Great. Thank you, coach. My other question is about Andrew Van Ginkle, who, whose defensive snaps keep going up over the last few weeks, but his special teams work has not decreased. So I just wanted to ask you about his ability to be able to play 80% of the defensive snaps and still give you 20 snaps on special teams every week. Yeah, you, you know, again, a, a kid that uh, that we're really happy to have is really, you know, developed, you know, over his over his three years here, and his production has gone up on on defense. His play time has gone up on defense, and that's how it should work. Uh, but at the same time, still heavily involved in the kicking game, and, and still a very good player for us. Great. Thanks, Coach. Barry. Danny, on a, on a list of moves that come out of nowhere. Jordan Scarlett being elevated was probably high on that list. Had he shown you something with his special teams acumen during his limited time on the practice squad that made you think he'd be helpful in that role last night? Well, I, I, it really goes more back to training camp. You know, we had him in training camp. So, uh, you know, we, we felt that he had some, some good attributes. And, you know, when we put him on practice squad, when with, with all the issues that we had you know, in the jet week, uh, and then again, picked up where he left off and showed us some good things, and especially at the positions that he played and some of the other things that happened to us during the week. It was uh, uh, it was a move we felt comfortable with, and he went out and performed well.